where every time I try and film a first impression video, it doesn't actually film, and then I can't do a first impressions anymore because I've already done the first impressions. It just didn't film in the first place. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to be doing a first impressions video on a foundation that I have wanted to try for a very, very long time now. It is only available in the US, but Amazon um, brought it out for, I think it was like 24 hours only the other day, so I snapped a couple up. A couple of things before we kind of get started. Yes, I have been MIA for, you know, a few weeks. It happens. Um, check out Tuesday's video to kind of find out what's been going on. I did a little bit of a life update straight glass haul, so I'll link that down below and also in the cards up here when I said that it's only could be this side. Um, second of all, let's ignore the lip. My yes, I had stitches in my lip, my cat's split open the other week, still healing. Let's ignore it. I know it looks disgusting. I'm sorry, but it's a lot better than it was yesterday. Just saying it had was all scabbed yesterday, so it's already a lot better. But yes, so Let's get into today's video. So today we're going to be testing out the L'Oreal Infallible Pro Glow Foundations. Um, these are a drugstore foundation. They're meant to be very glowy, very radiant, for normal to dry skin. They're meant to be very hydrating, lasting up to 24 hours. And as part of their Infallible range, which I really like their Infallible range, I think it's very, very good. Um, this has been very, very hyped up in the States and Canada, where I believe it is available. Um, whenever I watch a YouTuber, like Rachel Loves, I think uses this, absolutely loves it. Um, you guys know I love her. Um, and I've seen her use it a few times, I'm like, I want to try it. And I've been looking out for it in like Boots and Superdrug and everything and it still isn't available. And then I saw somebody put on Instagram it was available for like 24 hours only on Amazon. So I was like, I'm gonna get me some. So I ordered two different shades because you're buying online so you don't actually know. I'm hoping one of these fit for me. And we're just gonna put it on my face. We're gonna, I'm gonna talk through my first impressions. I'll do one side with a sponge, one side with a brush. This is a first impressions video, so you know, makeup and products sometimes once you've been trying things for a little bit longer, then you start to see more flaws with it. If you wear it on a different day with like a different environment, then it could be a little bit different. So these things could happen. My opinion on this may change in like two or three weeks' time. I will let you know. I will do a blog post on these, which will go up in about a month just to kind of let you know how I'm still fight finding it. But yeah, if you like these first impression videos, please make sure you give this video a big thumbs up and let me know any other products you'll be to do first impressions on. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button for new videos every Tuesday and Thursday. And uh, without further ado, let's rewind about half an hour ago. So I've got a naked face. So I picked up two shades. I've got 202, which is creamy natural, and then I've also got 203, which is new beige. I don't know, you know, if the colours are going to match or not. Um, but we are going to see. I'm hoping so, considering that I don't think you can get them anymore. Um, but yes, so, just a little bit of vital stats about the foundation. These were $11.99 on Amazon. Um, L'Oreal is very handy with their foundations because they tend to put this little guide on the back, um, which gives you the finish, wear up to your coverage and texture. So, it says that it gives you a radiant finish, worth up to 24 hours, the coverage is medium and the texture is air light. So I'm quite excited to try it and see what it's like. This is not my usual type of foundation. I don't usually go for glowy, radiant foundations. You know me, I'm generally a matte or like a, a soft matte kind of a gal. Um, but I just really wanted to try these because people over in the US and Canada rave about it. So I like it and I also generally like the infallible range. So I thought it'd be good to try. Um, so let's do I'm just going to put primer on my face first. I've already put the Glossier Priming Moisturizer on, which is like Bible at the moment for me. But the primer that I'm going to be using is the Cover FX Mattifying Primer with Anti Blemish Finish. Generally, the one I love the most is the Kills Miracle Bliss Skin Photo I've run out, I've had to reorder. But I do use this a lot as well, and I know how other foundations sit on top of this. So I always think it's important when you are trying a foundation for the first time to test it over a primer where you've used it before, you know how other foundations work on top of it, so that you can kind of actually give it a really good test and you know exactly what it's supposed to look like, I guess. Um, or what you want it to look like. So I'm just going to put this everywhere. I know I'm using a glowy foundation with a matte primer. Just how I roll. And if I'm going to go glowy, I want to look matte because when I've tried other glowy bases before, the reason I don't like them is because they make me look all shiny and oily, especially like on my nose and everything like that. So I have to wear a matte primer with it otherwise. They just look ridiculous. 
Cool, okay, so let's swatch these. Should we do the hand first? So this first one's creamy and natural. That one looks pretty good. Can't actually see it. So I'm guessing that's a pretty good match. Um, and then we're going for 203 in nude beige, which is a little bit darker. Yeah, 202 to 203. It's like one darker. Um, so let's test this. It is very liquidy the formula. Yeah, so that one's a little bit too dark for me, I think. I think that would be more of like a summer colour, but that's kind of a little orange. So yeah, we're going to go with 202. Where are tissues? So yeah, we're going to go with 202. Um, that one just seemed to match me the best. So as always, I'm just going to put a dollop on the back of my hand. It is very liquidy. Like, it's got proper bubbles in it and everything. And then you see, I'm just going to roll down my hand. So it's very, very liquidy. Um, I'm going to do half my face with a sponge and half with a brush. So, just going to dot that around. Hello, blemishes, where have you come from? Stress and hormones, Lisa. That's generally where they have come from. Also, can we just ignore my lip at the moment? Because I, it's got stitches in it. It looks weird. Can't put makeup on it. But we're going to ignore it. Okay, so take my sponge and just kind of bounce it in. It's definitely not matte. <laughs> it's definitely glowy. The coverage is quite good actually. It's better than I was expecting. But it does look very shiny and glowy. And I don't know how I feel about that. I mean, it's not kind of, I don't know, it's very patchy around here. I would say, like, can you see how kind of shiny that is compared to, like, the normal side of my face? It looks very shiny and it's a little bit patchy on the cheek here, so I think I'm just going to kind of build that up on the cheek a little bit and see if we can kind of make that a little bit less patchy. Okay, this is super, super glowy, like, like it looks wet on my face glowy, and I'm not sure how I feel about it. Okay, that's better. So it builds up nicely to, like, so you can put, like, a couple of layers on it. The coverage builds up nicely. I'd say the coverage is pretty good. It's better than I was expecting. Like, if you can see the difference in, how like, redness on this side of the face that I haven't done yet as opposed to this side, the coverage is, is kind of helped with a lot of that redness. I've got a lot of blemishes around here at the moment and it's covered those. Like I'm still going to need to use concealer on top of it, but it has covered. But, um, I mean the colour match is really nice. I was slightly concerned with how glowy it is right now. It looks very glowy for me. But um, we will see. I'm going to use um, a brush on the other side of my face and just kind of see what how that differs. So I feel like I'm using a lot of product to do it, I think because it's so liquidy, but um, you'll see. So I'm just using the Real Techniques buffing brush. I'm just going to blend that in. Okay, okay, so I think first impression straight away, prefer sponge. Okay, it's not so bad, like once it's kind of blending, blending? blended in but um I can still see like very kind of slight brush strokes where I've been blending it but it's not too yeah I can see like brush strokes along my cheek and around my face where I've used that which is like obviously not ideal I'm just going to bounce that on top there just to kind of see if I can get the same level of coverage okay yeah so it's not bad once it's like blended in a bit more with that. I am just going to go through and just kind of bounce it around the nose a bit just to kind of even that out. Bounce it a bit. I definitely prefer the um, sponge. This is just the Real Techniques makeup sponge. But the complexion one, I definitely prefer that. What I will say 
is this is not sticking to any dry patch at the moment. I have very, very dry patches around my nose here lately, especially here above like where all my lip got split and I had to have stitches and stuff. And other foundations I've been wearing, my more kind of matte ones, they have been clinging like nobody else's business and it's taken a superhuman effort to blend and cover, whereas this has just gone over that really nicely. There's no, you can't actually see kind of any of the texture there, which is nice. And as it is setting down, I don't feel as shiny, which is good. So yeah, I mean the coverage is, I'd agree the coverage is about medium. It's more than I was expecting. Um, the colour match is perfect for me. This is like my perfect colour match of foundation. So I'm really, really pleased about that. Generally I do find it quite, L'Oreal are quite easy to colour match because they usually do so many different colours anyway because I was ordering online, you never know, which is why I got the two. Um, but I really, really like that colour match. I do like the finish because it doesn't look greasy or oily. It's just a little bit shiny and it's still a little bit patchy just on this cheek here. So I'm just going to, just for curious sake, I'm just going to see if I can build on it just. A little bit more nothing too like drastic but just over the areas where I know my makeup will fade the quickest so I generally put a little bit more coverage on those areas anyway yes it builds up nicely it blends nicely okay apart from the fact that this is you know a lot shinier than what I usually go for or a lot more shinier a lot more glowy than I usually go for I like it it actually reminds me a bit of Nars Shea Glow. I'm not saying it's a do, but it does remind me of that. In terms of the coverage and the finish that it gives, I'd say Nars Shea Glow isn't quite as glowy as this, but this obviously hasn't settled down yet, so... That is kind of my first thought that it could be quite a good do for that. If only I had some left to test. Anyway, I'm going to finish the rest of my makeup now, see how other products layer on top of it, and then we will come back and I will kind of give you my first impression rundown, um, and yeah, we will come back to that. Okay, so the rest of the makeup has now gone on, so generally everything went over the top of it really, really nicely, like more liquidy, creamy products like concealer, um, didn't move the base product around at all, it didn't kind of make the foundation kind of break away or move or anything like that and I found with some sort of really liquidy foundation sometimes it can do that especially the very more kind of lighter feeling ones but it didn't do that at all everything layered over the top of it really nicely and I have found that actually now that kind of everything's on top including powder and the foundation is settled down I don't feel so shiny and glowy anymore which is good I don't feel uncomfortable I was feeling a little bit uncomfortable with just how glowy and radiant it was before everything else went over the top but I think now that it's settled it's been powdered down and everything it's a lot better for me I really like it from first impressions I think it sits very nicely on the skin it has good coverage it's got a very very nice kind of flawless look to it I really like how my skin is currently looking with this on so yeah first impressions really really like it we're going to first impressions I really like it. I wasn't sure what I was, how I was, I was expecting to feel about it because it is more of a glowy radiant foundation. It's not something that I usually reach for. I do think it could be a dupe for Nars Shea Glow if it kind of lasts as long as that particular product and has that wear time. Then I feel like I'm not, probably not going to have to repurchase this because this is pretty good. Blends best with a beauty blend or a sponge, I just found that that kind of gives the most flawless finish, helps it blend out a little bit more, whereas if you use a brush you did kind of find you had some of those brush marks. Other products layer on top of it very, very nicely. Yeah, that is everything for today's video, I hope you liked it, please if you do like these kind of first impression videos make sure you give this video a big thumbs up, let me know if there's any other products you want me to do first impressions on, don't forget to hit that subscribe button for new videos every Tuesday and Thursday, hopefully. Um, and yeah, I will see you guys all again next time. Bye!